Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Swish, and we are in the fifth week of regular season basketball and on to the fifth edition of Top Rook. If you're watching for the first time, this is a weekly video on progress of the top rookies as well as their rankings. I've been contemplating some changes and some of these will be implemented this week. I'm currently reducing the top 10 to a top 5 and will add more detail to the players that I list. This week has been a crazy week for the rookies. All across the board, players have had a rough week. Every single player that has played two games or more has somewhat regressed in the last couple of games. This can likely be attributed to the more veteran players finding their groove and giving these rookies a much more difficult time and the current bloodbath of a season that has been very competitive, to say the least. So where does this leave the rookies in today's rankings? Let's find out. Since we're doing a top 5 instead of a top 10, I'll list two additional players on the fringe just outside our top 5 as honorable mentions. I did this with the top 10 as well, so this shouldn't be new. These two players have a shot at entering the top 5 as there really is no tier difference that separates those that are out from those that are in. Today we'll start with those two players before we get into the top 5. So, not much happened with our 6th and 7th place rookies from last week. Last week at 7, we had Patrick Williams. This week, our number 7 player is Anthony Edwards. Our 6th ranking player last week was Anthony Edwards. This week, it's Patrick Williams. So, these guys literally just traded places. Edwards has been on a downward spiral in Minnesota, and I must say things aren't looking too good for the rookie. The former number one pick did well in his first few games, however, it almost seems like he either gave up or, as I mentioned in the opening, that the game seems to be a bit more difficult for him at this point. Rookies tend to get the toughest whistles as well, so most certainly they're adjusting to the ref's whistles since it has impacted most of the rookies at the moment. You know, uh, I feel like every time I go to the rim, I get fouled. So therefore I could get it going like through the free throw line, but I don't get any uh, foul calls. But um, as far as like knocking down jump shots, it's- Okay, so on to the top five. Our fifth ranked player this week still manages to maintain his spot from last week. This player is Tyrese Maxey. Maxey had a big career game scoring 39 points in an outburst six games ago versus the Denver Nuggets, though it came in a loss and since then has yet to come close to that peak. His next few games saw him score in the 15 point range and his last game versus the Celtics saw him score 0 points in 21 minutes. Maxey is more in the mold of a scoring guard and not a traditional point guard so his scoring is really his strong point. While he did manage to have an 8 assist game in an overtime win against the Miami Heat, that's a bit on the high side for Maxey as he's only averaging 2.3 assists per game. The 76ers still maintain a strong start on the year with 10 wins and 5 losses. They seem to be struggling having losing Seth Curry to injury temporarily but look for them to bounce back to winning form shortly as Seth just made his return tonight. While he was away, however, the Sixers had relegated his starting position to Maxi, having him play off Ben Simmons. Maxi is averaging 10.6 points, 2.3 assists, and 2.5 rebounds on 46% efficiency in 21.5 minutes of playing time to go with a player efficiency rating of 13.06. This is good for a player impact rating of 12.43, a reduction from last week. Our fourth ranked player this week, having recently been given the reins to guide his team, is Orlando Magic's Cole Anthony. Anthony came out to a rough start after Markel Fultz went down earlier this month. However, he seems to be somewhat recovering as he gets into the flow of the starting lineup. His three-point buzzer beater over Minnesota ended a six-game losing streak as they've repeatedly struggled to score over 100 points in a single game since Fultz's injury. Cole's three-point shot has improved over the last three games, however his field goal percentage is still in dire straits. Fultz will miss the rest of the season, so the Magic aren't left with much of a choice and are left with thrusting Anthony into the fire and hoping for the best. The Magic are, however, actively looking for a more experienced starting point guard and actually showed interest in acquiring Lonzo Ball from the Pelicans. Till then, Cole Anthony is either sink or swim. 
Cole is averaging 10.3 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 3.3 assists on 36% efficiency in 24 and a half minutes of playing time to go with a player efficiency rating of 9.8. This is good for a player impact rating of 15.13, an improvement over last week. Our third ranked player this week, holding steady at 3, is James Wiseman. After a horrid showing versus the Lakers with 5 turnovers in 13 minutes, Wiseman bounced back in the following game versus the San Antonio Spurs with a career-high 20 points, shuffling along 6 rebounds and 4 assists for a stellar all-round showing. Wiseman impressed playing above the rim for the most part with emphatic dunks, finishing lobs and jamming in a putback off a miss by Draymond Green. Wiseman has very big potential and barring any egregious mishaps, should make a surge higher up this list in the coming weeks. Most of his issues are rookie mistakes that he seems very good at correcting. With Draymond as his mentor and Steph as his point guard, Wiseman will be tasked with taking advantage of his athleticism to draw defenders concerned about the lob threat and open the driving lanes for Steph, Dre, and Wiggins. We saw indications of this in the game versus the Spurs. He is being utilized more and more in the Warriors offense and this will be scary for opponents as the tandem of Steph, Dre, and Wiseman develops. The Warriors currently have an 8-7 record and currently a 7th seed in the Western Conference. Wiseman is averaging 11.6 points, 6.1 rebounds, and 0.7 assists on 51% efficiency in 21 minutes of playing time to go with a player efficiency rating of 14.80. This is good for a player impact rating of 15.44, an improvement over last week. Our second place rookie, having maintained the spot over the last few weeks, is Tyrese Halliburton. Coming off the bench behind the Aaron Fox, Halliburton has been playing some very impactful minutes for the Sacramento Kings and is currently outplaying his draft slot. Over the last few games, however, Halliburton has slowed down, being less productive compared to just a week ago. The Kings as well have been on a four game losing streak with a couple of close games that likely could have been turned around if Halliburton had contributed in typical fashion. The Kings are currently the 14th seed in the West with a 5-10 record. His efficiency fell significantly, especially in the last three games versus the Clippers, whom they played twice, and the Pelicans, ranging from 28% to 36%. Halliburton is averaging 11.1 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 5.1 assists on 50% efficiency in 28 minutes of playing time to go with a player efficiency rating of 17.5. This is good for a player impact rating of 15.82. And our top rook holding down the number one spot for yet another week in a tier all by himself is LaMelo Ball. LaMelo has been playing particularly well and has separated himself from the rest of the rookie class by far. It will take a monumental effort to unseat LaMelo at this time as he has been doing all the right things to raise his stock. Although as a true facilitating point guard who likes to get his teammates involved, LaMelo somehow still manages to lead all rookies in scoring. He also leads all rookies in assists as well as rebounds and steals, putting him in a territory where you typically find only starters. Except LaMelo isn't starting on his team. As a matter of fact, despite outplaying his fellow teammates including much smaller guards in Terry Rozier and Devontae Graham, LaMelo still has to come off the bench and faces a minutes restriction that appears to be questionable for a player of his caliber. LaMelo will at times find himself being benched for his teammates not being ready or prepared for his passes, effectively turning the ball over. Meanwhile, the current starters have guaranteed minutes regardless of whether they play well or not. Using my player impact rating doesn't show the massive difference between the playing of LaMelo and his teammate Devontae. Due to LaMelo's push off the bench, which has led the team to wins, Devontae playing a lot of minutes while playing terribly has benefited him significantly. Looking at the individual stats minus the team impact, there is a separate scale that is embedded in all my calculations for comparing performances of guys across teams, and it works especially well for situations where bad players are played a lot of minutes compared to their much better teammates. On this scale, Devontae Graham is scored at a 60.6, while LaMelo is scored at a much better 84. 
I hope these scales aren't too confusing as these are the base numbers from which the player impact rating is derived. Devontae has a player impact rating of 20.3 due to playing a lot of minutes on a team that has won 6 games and lost 9 so far this season, putting the Hornets at the 13th seed in the East. His player efficiency rating is a lowly 11.80. Lamelo is averaging 12 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 assists on 40% efficiency in 25 minutes of playing time to go with a player efficiency rating of 17.82. This is good for a player impact rating of 21.5. This puts Lamelo Ball in another tier above all other rookies, being just under 6 impact points ahead of the second place Tyrese Halliburton. For context, going from 2nd place to 5th is only a drop off of 3 points and dropping 6 points would see you fall out of the top 10 to around the 13th spot. Yes, that is the current separation of Lamelo Ball from the rest of his peers when it comes to his impact on making his team win. And that's it for this weekend segment of Top Rook. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content and future updates on the top rookies for the 2021 NBA season. Thanks for watching. Till next time. I block so hard, sweetie, get served. Call me Lonzo Ball, bitches get swerved. Usually, I don't get down with these girls, but tonight it's on my mind. So I might eat.